is uh, Kartish Mantheram. I'm an assistant professor in chemical engineering. Uh, and our research is focused on finding ways of empowering individuals to create the materials and molecules that they interact with in their everyday lives. And so a large part of this is replacing you know, conventional feedstocks, things like plastics, uh, petrochemicals, and finding ways in which people within the walls of their own home or in small communities can create these things themselves. And so the idea is that you could take uh, air, concentrated sources of carbon dioxide, water, uh, and clean sources of electricity, and be able to use these feedstocks to then make things that you need in your everyday lives. So that's, that's the focus of what we work on. Yeah, and so in, in the area of electrifying the chemical industry, what we're really looking at there is leveraging trends in electrification. That if you look at sources like solar and wind, that those electrical energy sources are becoming cheaper and cheaper. And so there's an opportunity now to use these green electrons to power chemical transformations. And so when you look at how we presently make chemicals, we generally make them through thermochemical routes. And so these thermochemical routes involve raising temperatures, raising pressures. And by doing that, we drive chemical transformations. And instead of doing that, what we're envisioning is using voltage, using electricity to drive chemical conversion. So when you replace temperature and pressure with electricity, you have a much more mild set of conditions. You can go from having a large chemical factory that's centralized to instead having something that's modular or small scale, since you no longer have to get to extremely high temperatures or pressures. It just makes uh, the entire manufacturing process one which can be distributed and modular. Now, when you look at these modular processes, this helps to match a trend that we're seeing right now in industry with, with additive manufacturing, with things like 3D printing. You're able to now make objects locally, but the problem is that those feedstocks to make those objects are not created locally. And so by now creating feedstocks in a local fashion as well, we're joining these trends. We're bringing together feedstock generation and production and manufacturing together in a localized fashion. Yeah, and so the specific uh, chemicals that we're looking at are things like uh, ammonia, ethylene, propylene, methanol. Uh, these are four of the largest, uh, the chemicals with the largest energy footprint and uh, by mass, as well as if one looks at from a CO2 footprint perspective, these are the chemicals that have uh, the biggest impact on global warming in terms of their production. And so we've, we've identified those uh, as clear targets at the outset uh, for chemicals that, if decarbonized, would have a large impact on industry. Uh, when you look at the chemical industry today, um, there's a century or more of expertise in thermochemical transformations. That's really what the industry is built around. There are a few examples, though, of electrochemical transformations, you know, the production of aluminum, the production of chlorine. Uh, these are chemicals which, at scale, are produced through electrochemical, electrically driven routes. And so there are opportunities to take that understanding of how those chemicals are made and translate that to other chemicals, things like ammonia, methanol, ethylene, and propylene. Uh, and we hope that that will help to facilitate this transition. The very beginnings of this, though, in terms of making some of these compounds uh, is reflected in how we, some startup companies are starting to make hydrogen today. Uh, and the ability to take water and convert it into hydrogen uh, is an example of how we can make some of these other chemicals. And so if one looks at these startup companies and a few, and a few larger chemical companies, they've kind of laid out a blueprint for how this transformation could take place. Yeah, so if one looks at uh, these chemical processes and looks at the missing piece, the missing piece uh, is this reactor which has the ability to take in electricity, taken basic feedstocks like CO2, uh, air, uh, water, and convert these into these chemicals. And if one then looks within that, what is missing to stop this from being a, a reality today, uh, it's the catalysts. The catalysts are at the heart of this technology. Uh, the catalysts are these materials which uh, take molecules in, that absorb the molecules onto their surfaces, rearrange them, break and form chemical bonds, and then let out different product molecules. And so by engineering these materials and their surfaces, we change uh, the free energy landscape that these molecules encounter. That changes what they transform into, the efficiency with which they transform, uh, and that, that's what we focus on. We, we dream about catalysts and the way that they dance with molecules.